All right. Uh, this next lecture is uh, an odds and ends lecture. Uh, we're going to talk about various pieces that uh, that you're going to come across that are pretty important. Let's let's start with the init method. So I briefly touched on this in the last uh, uh, lecture. What is the init method? Well, the init method uh, for any C++, Java, C# -sharp folk out there um, is the initialization part of a constructor that you would find in those languages. Um, and we don't have to create an init method explicitly um, like this. This would be the, uh, the default uh, signature for init. It's already created for us inside of NSObject. We just need to overload it if we want to actually initialize uh, numerator and denominator in this case. But I do want to initialize numerator and denominator, but there's no reason that I need to do that inside of init. I mean, it would look something like this. It would look like id uh, init and then <clears throat> I would, you know, set self.numerator uh, to um, maybe zero and self.denominator zero. Well, here's the thing. Those, those data members are already default to zero. They're integers. When I allocate it, uh, an object, it, it gets memset, so to speak, uh, to zero. So there's no reason for me to initialize them to zero. What would I want to do instead? Well, I would want to initialize them with actual um, arguments. So what if I said init, init with numerator and then I pass in an integer for the numerator and denominator and I pass in an int for the denominator. Now some of you might be a little bit blown away here. This is this is weird weird syntax for for uh, uh, for most folks coming from from uh, C++ or C# -sharp or uh, or Java or something like that. Look at look at what this code says. This creates a method whose return value is id, um, whose got whose name is init with numerator, colon, and then it actually has two uh, two arguments. The first argument is is actually coupled with the name of the method. The name of the argument is coupled with the name of the method. So init with numerator. And then the very first variable that comes after that, the very first argument that comes after that, is part of that, if you will, if it's named with that. But then I have a, a space, and denominator colon, well, and denominator is a named argument. And this is a little odd, right? We don't have named arguments in any, any of the other languages that I've, I'm, I'm routinely uh, referring back to. Um, we simply have a comma-separated list of, of arguments. Well, here we have multiple names, and uh, for each argument, uh, the argument has, it's optional. You don't have to use it, but it's highly recommended. Um, if you have multiple parameters, you, uh, you absolutely want to name them. And if you, if, you, if you read this, if you imagine uh, initializing with this, it would read like init with numerator and denominator. Uh, and that's, that's pretty easy to understand. That's, it's self, very self-documenting. So this is how you would implement uh, such a method. So id, because this is the return value of any init method. It, it has to be this. It can't be an explicit fraction, because remember that init came from the nsObject method, and nsObject has no idea what's going to inherit from it, expect, you know, including fraction. So um, it's going to return an id, but an id is a polymorphic object that allows us to be anything. All right, id can be a fraction in this case. So this is how the pattern works with it, and in, in, uh, with uh, init, and it may seem a little strange at first, but you're going to follow this pattern forever, and that is self assignment equal super init. Okay, now super refers to the the parent class, and remember that with single inheritance, there's only exactly one parent class. Uh, in this case, it's NS object, but it could be, you know, you could have three, four, five levels of, of inheritance that you're dealing with. Super goes up one round, all right, one, one level. What does, why do I have to assign it back to self? Well, that's part of the pattern here. It's saying that super um, uh, init, the init method actually can return nil, N-I-L. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to type that out here so you can see what nil is. Nil is not the same thing. If it, it's, it's akin to null or uh, the null terminator it, it, or zero. It's simply it's the objective uh, C syntax for saying uh, nothing. Okay, so an ob putting an object to nothing. Self can be nil, and if 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 uh, if super init returns nil, I need to test for that and then not continue with my initialization. So what I can do here is if self um, and then now I can continue on with my uh, with my uh, initialization. You could also type, you know, if self 
does not equal nil. That's fine too. That's more explicit if you like that. Knock yourself out. Okay. So we'll do self.numerator is equal to numerator. Come here, you. And self.denominator is equal to denominator. Okay. Oop. Denominator. All right. Now, at the very end, we need to return self. Because remember, just like with super init, can re it returns an ID. Well, so does it our, our overloaded init here, on init with numerator. Um, that is, an, uh, that is a, uh, an example, a little odds and end here of, of two things. One, how to properly create an init overload. And this is not just, you could do this with just plain old init. You'd have to do uh, the self equals, uh, something equals super init and self does not equal nil, y even if you didn't have multiple arguments here. But this is a, another example. The second part of this example is how do I do uh, multiple named arguments with a method? Something I want to I wanna mention is that the name of this method, as strange as this might sound, is actually, and I'll, I'll type it out here so you can see it, but I'm just going to use quotes just so that, that, that to, to, to define it for you. It's actually init with numerator, oops, numerator, colon, and denominator, colon. That's actually the name of this method. That may sound really strange, but um, there's a special uh, construct called a selector, and a selector, S-E-L, okay, um, is, you know, my, you know, some action, a sum and equal, at selector, and then I would actually pass in these words, um, these word, this word of init with numerator and denominator. Now, what I just created there, uh, for those who are uninitiated here with the concept of selectors, it is a function pointer. Um, I can I can do this with any function. I can create a, a the data type is SEL, all right, and um, you know my method, uh, sum and equal at selector. It's a special keyword at selector, not dissimilar to say um, size of uh, in C. Okay, so at selector, and if I just type in description, that's going to return me a, a function pointer. All right, in Objective C speak, that's a selector um, that points to the descriptor, the description method. This action selector points to the init with numerator uh, method. Now, where are those things helpful? And clearly, the answer is I can switch off of that. I, these are function pointers that I can pass as arguments uh, to methods. Um, I can then invoke them um, like I would any other method. Right, so that's that's pretty awesome stuff. I can actually invoke this dynamic um, uh, method. I'll, I'll show you use of that here in a little bit. But I wanted to the the real point here was to show you that the with with uh, multiple arguments with named arguments, the method name isn't simply the first part. isn't isn't just init with numerator. It's actually init with numerator and denominator. Furthermore, if I had if I looked at I've got a set numerator and set denominator created by these properties. The name of my set numerator, since it, it actually has a method, is set denominator set denominator. Notice here, it's set denominator colon. It's not simply set denominator without the colon. Description doesn't have a trailing colon because there is no argument. Set denominator has one and only one argument, so it is named, the actual name of the, of the method is set denominator colon. So a uh, little odd, odds and ends there that I wanted to to bring up. Okay, um, the, the next thing I want to show you, you is uh, property qualifiers. So something that we haven't talked to, we, I said, mentioned that, that uh, properties have this assign method. And all that does is a completely um, kind of brainless assign. It, it, there's nothing special about it. Um, it's just assigning the argument that comes into the setter um, and to the whatever the underlying storage is going to be, underscore numerator, underscore denominator. Um, there are a couple of other uh, properties, um, uh, modifiers that we could apply here. One, is, one is read-only. Um, so if we said that this was read-only, then it would have no setter. Numerator would not be settable from the external interface. And indeed, notice that when I typed that in here, now I get a complaint that says, hey, wait a minute, self.numerator is read-only. There is no setter. Um, the default is read-write. Uh, you don't have to type that. That's, that's the uh, read-write. There's another component here that I want to mention, another modifier, which is non-atomic. Non-atomic properties are uh, do not lock 
uh, the property in the case of multi-threaded access. Um, multi-threaded access is, we're going to get, we'll describe that later in the semester. But right now, we're not going to do anything um, too hairy with multi-threading. But to, suffice it to say, there's concurrent access to shared objects is prob problematic you know, over multiple threads. If, let's say, if this, in the case of a property, if this property was not marked as atomic, now, there is no mark for atomic. There is no modifier. It's the absence of non-atomic that makes it atomic. And atomic operations, atomic properties, simply mean that the, the, the underlying uh, storage, the underscore numerator in this case, would be wrapped inside of lock statements um, it, it, that would prevent it from being um, uh, giving back bad information across multiple threads right, if it was accessed simultaneously. So non-atomic. Uh, there's a you know there's some thought that maybe non-atomic would maybe speed up the access and that, that maybe marginally right that 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 might happen just I, I would say that's not a concern the, the concern is use it if you're going to use this thing instead of a, a, a multi-threaded operation um, or if you know explicitly that you're not going to be in a multi-threaded application um, then just mark it as non-atomic Otherwise, leave it as leave it by itself without the non non atomic keyword, and that's going to wrap it inside of lock statements that are, are going to allow for multi threaded safe multi threaded access. Um, there's two more uh, statements that I want to mention, uh, and one of them is uh, strong, and the other one is weak. Okay, now strong and weak. So it's it's it's. Uh, the keyword strong or the keyword weak. I can't use them. They're mutually exclusive. I can't say a strong, strong, and weak. I have to do use one, not not all three. Um, this really imp uh, apply implies that we have got actual pointers here, some objects that we're going to return. So, I mean, if if for whatever reason I wanted to return um, a, another object, a fraction star and ns star, I could say you know um, property. Let's let's do this. Let's do ns string. Okay. And oops, pardon me. Let's do property strong um, and a string star name. And let's say that every single uh, fraction has got a name associated with it. I, this is a contrived example. Forgive me for that. But um, non-atomic uh, is the, the name of the, let's say it's non-atomic and it's strong. Now what strong means is that the, the corresponding synthesizer, when I, cr when I say synthesize, um, and I synthesize the name here, uh, synth, there we go, synthesize name. Um, the underlying setters and getters, what that does is, is say, I guarantee, the compiler says, I guarantee that as long as you're still using the name, as, so, as long as this object exists, the, the instance of the fraction that is associated with this uh, data member, that the name will not be... Um, freed. It will not go back into memory, right? What's happening in iOS in, is that uh, objects are continuously within a loop uh, as the UI is looking for input. It, there, it, there's a loop that's constantly happening on iOS. It's constantly freeing up memory. It's not like a garbage collected system uh, like C Sharp or Java. Instead, it's a it's more like smart pointers in C++. And what's happening here is that the the underlying name is might have a, a retain count of zero, and what that retain count means is, um, hey, no one's referencing me anymore. So the next time the auto release pool, uh, uh, the most the most inner auto release pool uh, drains, uh, it will release this object. Well, what Strong says is, I guarantee that that will never happen while the parent fraction object is going to 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 survive. Right? While the fr fraction class is around, this underlying guy is not around. Now. An, the opposite of that is weak, all right? Weak says, "Hey, I'm going to point to something, all right? This name, this name uh, property is going to point to something else that is most likely strong, okay? So I'm going to point to something else uh, that is that is most likely strong, and when that goes away, when that gets, when its retain count is zero, this will be set to nil, all right? This name will be set to nil." So weak means that at any point I, I will never be dangling. I, I that's a really bad idea, right? Is to have dangly po dangling pointers that hey, I still have a reference to something that has now been freed. Um, but that's not the case here. This is this is a weak pointer or a weak property says hey, when the retain count of the thing that I'm pointing to goes to zero, 
uh, and it gets released by the auto release pool. Anything that is associated with it uh, that is marked as weak is going to be set to nil, and that's a pretty cool thing. All right. Uh, an example of this that we're going to use a lot is in the user interfaces that we create for iOS. When we create uh, outlets for buttons or labels or, or anything inside of the interface that create that were created inside of a nib or that we create inside of a storyboard, um, all of those outlets will mark as weak because they actually have strong storage when they're created by the nib when a nib gets loaded. Okay. So those are just a couple of odds and ends here specifically. Um, 